All right, so um, we have spent the last couple of weeks talking about what to do before temptation hits. Um, if you missed it, part one and part two are already uploaded on the YouTube channel. I was just telling, um, telling them that I was going through, we've got 258 recordings out there now. 60 of them are Bible study-ish or so. There's like 183rd talks. Um, you can check those out at your leisure. So today we're going to switch gears and we're going to talk about what to do when temptation does strike. Because it's going to come. Right? I don't know when it's going to come, but it's coming. The Bible says in 1, uh, 1 Peter 5, 8, to be sober, to be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. And that's what he does. Okay? He does all, all day long, he does one thing. He just looks for people to devour. He is... Uh, he hates us. We just need to understand he hates us. So point number one is, you need to know that it's not a game. Okay, so when, when you're in the middle of a temptation, you need to understand that this is not a game that he's playing for keeps, 1 Peter 5.8. <laughs> he's playing for keeps. John 10.10 10 says it this way. The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. He wants to do all of that. He wants to steal from you. He wants to steal your joy. He wants to steal your testimony. He wants to steal your progress. He wants to steal your family. He wants to steal your home. He wants to steal your, your ability to have a career. He wants to steal your reputation. And he will if you start thinking it's a game. If you underestimate the evil... Behind the temptation, he has got you already. He wants to steal. But he doesn't just want to steal. He wants to kill you. You say, oh, the devil wouldn't want to kill me. He's killed 65 million babies in America in the last some odd 50 years. And all he wants is just one more. Okay? If he could kill everybody in America and still want just one more. Okay? That's how much he hates us. Steal, kill, destroy, maim. He despises our existence. I wonder if you've ever thought about this. <clears throat> Do you know what people are made out of? Water. <laughs> We're made out of dirt. We are made out of dirt. You go back to the Garden of Eden, right? Over there, before we were in the Garden of Eden. God formed us out of the dust of the earth. But you know what the Bible says in Ezekiel 28, 13? It tells us that the devil was in the garden of God. I don't know if he was there at the time of the creation, but shortly thereafter, and he knows we're just made out of dirt. And he despises us because we are the apple of God's eye. The Lord God died for us. And the devil hates that. We are the apple of God's eye. The, the devil's an angel. Hebrews tells us in Hebrews chapter 2 that people were made lower than the angels. Angels up here, people down here. What are we mad out of? Dirt! He kind of looks at us like we look at roaches. <laughs> Something to be eliminated that's in his way. He doesn't look at us with compassion and think, oh, you know what, maybe I'll make friends with one. No! We are there simply to be eliminated with extreme prejudice and as much pain as possible because we're bugs. It's like a woman with a spider. Kill it and make it hurt. <laughs> you know? <laughs> okay? That's the way he looks at us. And you got to understand that. Otherwise, you start thinking it's a game. You start thinking you can somehow make nice nice with him. You can somehow flirt with temptation and succeed. You can't. You have to understand this is a battle, and he wants to be ultimately victorious. 
Genesis chapter 3. So don't do what Eve did. Talking about what to do in the middle of a temptation. Genesis chapter 3. I'm going to start you off. I'll just read verse 1 through 6-ish. Now the serpent, possessed by the devil, was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. She misquoted scripture. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree did be desired to make one wise. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave her also to her husband with her, and he did eat. And they both spiritually died. It took the devil three sentences to wipe out mankind. When you're in the middle of a temptation, do not start reasoning with the devil. You start trying to outlogic him. You start trying to outdebate your temptation. You start trying to have that argument in your head. You have already lost. The Bible says also in Ezekiel 38 that he was wiser. What does it say? I'm looking for it right here. Ezekiel 28 tells us that the devil sealest up the sum full of wisdom. Not a little bit, full of wisdom. And he has been wiping out people since the beginning. He has destroyed kings. He has destroyed generals. He has destroyed philosophers. He has destroyed the common man. He has destroyed geniuses. And you're a fool if you think that you're going to go up against him and beat him. So do not get into a debate with the devil when the temptation comes. Because I know how that ends. It always ends with me in sin and him laughing at me. Every time! <laughs> because he knows my buttons. He knows what works. He knows what would work on her and it knows what it would work on me. The Bible says in James Chapter 1, verse 14 and 15. We love this verse. In fact, we might have just heard this verse a couple, a couple weeks ago. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then, when lust hath conceit. Now, lust is just an appetite. It's an appetite for wrong. And the devil comes along and he stirs it up. Eat the fruit, Eve. Eat the fruit, Eve. Eat the fruit. Gets it all stirred up, and man, he feels that. You get that spiritual pressure that you just want to do it, and you start kind of, mm, mm. And then he says, and lust, when it hath conceived, bringeth forth sin. That word conceived, Steve Carrington tells us, you know, it can mean have a baby, right? But it can also mean to frame it in your mind. Before you ever did it, you thunk it. You started reasoning with the devil. But the whole time you were reasoning with the devil, you were thinking about the sin. See, that's where he gets you. Because you think I, you, can you can separate your You can just have the debate. And you'll throw down some great thought and he'll walk away. No, he won't. Because he knows that the whole time you're debating with him, you're turning it over in your mind. And lust, when it hath been conceived, bringeth forth sin, and sin bringeth forth the death that he wants in your life. He would love to talk to you about your sin problem. Because the more he can get you to talk about your sin problem, the more likely you are to commit it. And then he wins. Do not be like Eve. Do not. You frame it in your mind. You get to turning it over, and then you end up doing what she did. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes, see, she's turning it over in her mind, and the tree desired to make one wise, then she took the fruit thereof and did eat, and they died. What did Robert say earlier? He said, stop it! When the devil comes and the temptation comes, 
instead of arguing with it, stop it! <laughs> Don't let it fester. Don't let it grow. Don't be thinking about it. Don't sit there and do 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 all this stuff. Me personally, I don't say stop it. Sometimes I'll say no. Most of the time I'll say, I'm dead to that. Because Romans chapter 6 tells me I'm dead to that. But then I intentionally change my thoughts. I intentionally move away from that. Because 2 Corinthians chapter 10 tells me that I'm supposed to cast down those thoughts and imaginations. I'm supposed to cast them down. How do you cast it down? Well, you put something else in the spot. So sometimes I just start praying out loud. Lord God, I'm being tempted right now. And it's a heavy one. And I don't know if I'm going to make it, so I need you to intervene for me. I need you, Lord Jesus, to go over there and kick the devil's butt. I'm going to talk to you instead of talking to him. And I'm going to talk to you instead of wrestling with him. I'm going to wrestle with God until I get the victory. I'm not going to wrestle with my sin. Hey, Robert, come here a minute. Now, we're going to be real gentle here. But let me show you what happens when you wrestle with your sin. Wrestle me, man. Wrestle. Okay. Ah. okay. You can't tell if we're hugging or wrestling. And that's what it is with your sin. See, you tell me you're wrestling with your sin, and I actually said, no, you're not. You're imprinting it. <laughs> Bible doesn't tell you. Thank you, sir. doesn't tell you to wrestle with your sin. It says to flee youthful lusts. You flee them. You don't wrestle with them. You wrestle with them. You're just hanging on to them. I got a struggle I'm wrestling with. Then put it down and walk away. Run as fast as you can. Get that thing out of your life. Do not wrestle with it. It will kill you. You cannot win. So sometimes I pray, and sometimes I praise God, because I know the devil hates that, and my Bible says that God inhabits praise. So sometimes I pray. Sometimes I sing songs. Amazing Grace will do it. I don't care. Just something to get my brain on something else. Sometimes I'll read my Bible. Sometimes I'll read the newspaper, for goodness sake. Anything to get my brain refocused on something else. To cast down that imagination. To take that thought into captivity. To get my brain on something else. You know, it's really hard to read a passage of Scripture out loud and think about sin at the same time. Let me say that again. It's really hard to read a passage of Scripture out loud and think about sin at the same time. It just is. Do that. Don't do what Eve did. Do what Jesus did. Do what Jesus did. Matthew chapter 4. Let's just kind of roll through this temptation. We listened. We watched poor Eve. She went down like a burning plane. Okay. <laughs> we don't want to do that. Right? She killed the entire humanity. Her and Eve hit her and Adam. Matthew chapter 4. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness and tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungered. Understatement of Scripture, right? And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, that's really one of the temptations. We don't really call that one out. But the first thing he's going to tempt you on is, Do you really have that relationship? Are you really a child of God? Because you're not acting like one right now. You call yourself a Christian? He will attack your childhood, your sonship, your daughtership. He will attack that by way of trying to get you to have give into a temptation. Command these stones to be made to bread. But he answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh them up into a holy city, and setteth them on a pinnacle of the temple, and said in him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge over it concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou shalt dash thy foot against the stone. And Jesus said in him, It is written, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and saith unto them, unto him, All these things will I give thee if thou, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan. It is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him. That's what we want. We want that then the devil leaveth him. <laughs> okay? So here's what happens. Right? So I want you to be a little bit about Jesus. I want you to be prepared. Okay, now we're not going to argue with the devil, but in your own head, you've got a defense. You need to have a defense. I, I, one, of my, um, one of my messages that is out there on YouTube is called Three Verses Every Christian Should Know. And it's these three. Yes, there's a lot of verses you should know, but you need these three. Number one, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. 
That takes care of me for cheeseburgers, you for drugs, that person for alcohol, okay? Takes care of my brownie problem. Because when the devil comes at me, I can say, listen, I'm not going to live by that alone, but my every word proceed out of the mouth of God. I'm not quoting that at the devil. I'm not getting into a scriptural battle. I'm running into that verse as my tower. And I'm like, nope, nope, nope. Man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word proceed out of the mouth of God. That's my cloak. That's my shield. That's my hiding place. I'm going to run into that. I'm going to hide. I'm going to hide from the devil in that verse. The second verse is, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Do you know how many times people will do this? When, when you're getting ready to sin, one of, the, one of the things people will do is this. If God wanted to stop me, he could. Well, that's true, but thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. That'll take care of it. Number three is, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. I get a lot of, lot of uh, different temptations, and I have to run to that one. There's only three types of sin. Only three types. There's the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. The lust of the flesh looks like this. The fruit is good to eat. The bread will be tasty. So will the brownies and the drugs and the alcohol. Okay? That's lust of the flesh. Lust of the eyes. The fruit was pleasant to look at. Here are some kingdoms I'll give you. What is he showing you? And then there's the pride of life. And the fruit was desired to make one wise. Hey, it'll make you smarter and better than all those other people around you. Angels will catch you. You'll have a great testimony. Are you kidding me? That's pride of life. If you have those three verses, you have protection. Because you can run into those and hide, hide from the devil in there. Those are towers. They are castles. I'm going to keep going. Number four. Don't fight like that. Don't, don't fight like Eve. That was number one. Number one. <laughs> oh, he means business. He's going to kill you. Number two, do, don't do what Eve did. Number three, do what Jesus did. Number four is, call out the lie. Call out the lie. Okay? That's part of what quoting the scripture is doing. You have got to be able to identify the lie. It doesn't matter if I do it. Nobody sees me. Nobody will even know. Nobody will even care if I do. I'm only hurting me. Etc. Etc. I know what the devil comes and lies to me about. I wrote them down for you. What does he come to you with? And you got to call it out. No, 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 no. Sometimes, in addition to saying no, or stop it, or I'm dead to that, I will also say this. That's a lie. My wife's got to wonder. i got to look like I have Tourette sometimes, right? <laughs> That's a lie. And she'll be like, what? <laughs> Your sobriety does matter. You're living a new life and you're putting one day of victory in front of another day of victory in front of another day of victory so that you can build the life that God has for you. You're not some just piece of cells. No, God made you on purpose with a purpose. God knows who you are. He loved you enough to die for you. Don't you dare think that you're not important. Don't you dare let him tell you that nobody will care. He said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. And your sin will hurt you. And it will hurt those who follow you. That's one of our principles. Our sins do hurt those who follow us. And no, you cannot have a sin without having a consequence. We would love to be able to have just one in a vacuum 
with no consequences to it. A freebie. He offers us freebies. All the pushers do. <laughs> and he'll tell you there's no consequences for this one. Because it's a freebie. But principle, we just watched today. Well, we watch them all. <laughs> when you give in to temptation, you lose the ability to choose. The results are inevitable, incalculable, and up to God. So don't let him fool you. This will hurt. There will be a reckoning. There will be suffering. You cannot, you cannot have sin without suffering. It will come. You just don't know when. You don't know what form it's going to take. So it's okay to call out the lie and tell him, no, this is going to hurt me. I'm not doing it. <laughs> no, Jesus does love me. I'm not doing it. No, I have the victory if I don't do this. I'm not doing it. And then the last thing I'm going to say that's kind of related to these is we talked about putting on the armor of God in Ephesians chapter 6. Sometimes, guys, it just comes down to this. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, stand therefore. Sometimes, when the temptation comes, all you can do is hang on to Jesus and wait for it to pass. You just stand. He's not asking you to advance. He's not asking you to do anything but just stand. Hang on! It'll pass. It will pass. You will get the victory. Just stand! When the storms come and the winds blow and it gets too oppressive and you don't know how you're going, you stand! And you don't let him push you away. You just hang on to the Lord. He's going to come at you. He's going to whisper at you. He's going to lie to you. He's going to trick you. He's going to make promises to you. And you stand! And you wait. It will pass. It will pass. So those are some things to do when the temptations are actually hitting you. Let's pray. Lord God, thank you for loving us. Father, help us to know the book. Help us to run into just a few verses and hide. Help us to be wise enough not to argue with our enemy. He has taken down great men and great women. And instead, help us to run and hang on to Jesus, to hide in you, and to stand, and to wait, and to stand, and to pray, and to stand, just to be able to stand. We thank you, Lord, for loving us. In Jesus' name, amen.